Welcome to another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Alex Jones. Today's date is Monday, May 14th, 2012. Tonight, sources inside Bilderberg reveal the Cabal's secret plans. Further revelations about the Bilderberg's 2012 agenda soon to follow. Then, Dianne Feinstein wants more sexual molestation at America's airports, and she's criticizing Americans for complaining about the TSA grope downs and the hands down our pants. Meanwhile, a popular UK comedy show plays a clip from the InfoWars Nightly News, where Alex Jones talks about the TSA grope down PSYOP, and David Hasselhoff proclaims his love for airport security. That video clip, plus more of our top stories and an update from Dan Fight, all coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. First up tonight, we've got some really good news here with InfoWars Nightly News, teleprompter free, globalist influence free as well. We're influenced by our desire for liberty and still more of it. Sources inside Bilderberg spill Cabal's secret plans. In fact, I've learned uh, some of their agenda items, and I'm going to be releasing those soon. I have two different sources, one of them inside the Bilderberg group, another uh, separate, not a Bilderberg member, but someone within Bilderberg. I'll just leave it at that. And they confirmed to me what the other source had told me, that it is the Palm Tree Conference. Never before have we learned the code name uh, weeks out uh, of the conference. Normally, we don't even learn the code name during the conference that's going to be held uh, in 2012, May 31st through June 4th in Chantilly, Virginia at the Marriott uh, Center there, the same place they were four years ago. If you want to read the article, it's at InfoWars.com. Very exciting information, and good to know that there are people everywhere who love liberty. You see, we see something, we say something. And people within the system realize these are eugenicist criminals who openly want to establish world government, bankrupt the nation states, so the nation states have to accept a program of eugenics. For those that don't know what eugenics is, it's hell on earth. Look it up. So... This is the enemy of humanity, and people are finding that out. So many times Jim Tucker talks about he'll check in a few days before they shut the hotel down if he learns where they're having it beforehand, and sometimes he doesn't learn until it's already started. This is rare to learn weeks and weeks before. And he goes in and talks to bartenders, talks to waitresses, talks to hotel staff, and they say, no, I'll be fired if I talk about Bilderberg. How dare you ask me? And they try to throw him out. But once they're treated like absolute filth, you know, he tells them, well, Next week when they get here, I'll be across the street at that hotel. You'll want to come talk to me. And when they show up and say, do not look at Hillary Clinton in the eyes, when they tell them you're filth, you're trash, when they hear them as they're serving them coffee, talk about bankrupting their nations, it doesn't matter if they're meeting in France or Canada or the U.S., the U.K. Uh, or Germany. People are people, and they get angry and spill their guts, and that's happening more and more just like we had uh, witnesses to the underwear bomber being a staged operation. And it turned out they were giving us accurate info, Kurt Haskell and his wife. This is happening over and over again. We have our people everywhere. And coming up tonight, I'm going to talk about some of the bad experiences I had at the Padre Island National Seashore on the Texas coast that's now a federal zone. But the good news is in the middle of this police state, the park rangers, when we drove in, said they were listeners. People driving on the beach were stopping and were listeners, and the people parked on both sides of us were listeners. Again, that's just a gauge of liberty and how many people are awake. I'm a public figure. I know I make this point a lot because it's so important. You aren't a public figure, so you think you're all alone. You are not alone. People recognize what's happening. And I noticed it was regular park rangers that were listeners. It was the cops that were harassing everybody because that's how they've been trained. We've got to be there to point out this is all part of this nanny state hysteria. So that is coming up. Speaking of the nanny state, this is something we've talked about a lot. 
with our financial experts the last four years or so that there's a plan to implode the euro and bring it into the new world order. This is a designed implosion to bankrupt the countries and then finally bankrupt the euro into an even greater tyranny as part of a global regionalized system. Here it is, euro officials begin to weigh Greek exit as euro weakens. Greece's possible exit from the euro moved to the center of Europe's financial crisis debate, rattling markets as authorities, not servants, in Athens struggle to form a government. You mean the bankers that installed their people over the Greeks? 90 plus percent of the debt not owed by them? Their last criminal president and finance minister signed them on to the foreign banker debt that was created, the derivatives? This is all Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan. They're the ones running the eugenics. They're the ones calling for world government. They're the ones federalizing your police. They're the enemy. They're the money changers. So now what we talked about is openly being discussed, but they're acting like it's an accident. This was pre-planned. Continuing here, J.P. Morgan, $2 billion loss, just a preview of coming derivatives collapse. That's out of the Economic Collapse blog, also posted at Infowars.com. And again, all the financial experts we've had on say it's over $1,500 trillion, $1,500 trillion, $1.5 quadrillion. And that's grown the last two years because they've been leveraging bailouts into that. So it's probably over $2 quadrillion. Many experts we talked to, like Dr. Tarpley, say it is physically impossible to pay this back. And it's not our debt. The bankers created the problem and then poses as the solution, signing us on to their debt. This is just the beginning. This is just a very small preview of what is going to happen when we see the collapse of the worldwide derivatives market. And the very criminals that did it are going to pose as the savior and tell us they've got to raise our taxes to pay them more money to back up their fraud. And they think they control the media and the police forces and the military, they're going to get away with this. No, they're not, because I've been there, Ron Paul's been there, and you've been there spreading the word and exposing these people. I'm on the front line walking point here. They may take me out. They may set us up for a crooked toenail, but they can never shut you up and don't ever let them shut you up. They are scared of you taking action with banner hangs and calling in to talk radio and going to city council and running for office and putting out local newsletters, just getting aggressive and getting in the face of tyranny and letting everybody know that freedom is popular and that we're the majority and we are aware of the tyrants. Here's another one, J.P. Morgan units, London staff may go as loss prompts exits. Now let's shift gears to a real witch. Feinstein says because of the double agent, that leaked out and they said, oh yeah, I'll, CIA didn't stage the bombing, the latest underwear threat that never happened. Uh, no, we had a double agent in, thank God, just like the government got Mutalib on the aircraft two, two Christmases ago. Feinstein, who wants to take your guns but has bodyguards. Feinstein, who loves destroying California to consolidate power, passing carbon taxes there to make it uncompetitive. Feinstein just needs to go to hell. I mean, I am so sick of this witch squatting on top of our country and crapping all over us. And excuse me, it's the only way to describe her. She told Fox News, we have the video clip here in the article, uh, that get ready for more aggressive molestation. They're going to take you in the back rooms and strip search you like they've been doing old ladies. They're going to drag your kids away from you as they cry. And if you get up, they're going to have the cops beat your brains in like they did Kelly Thomas. So just get used to it because she runs America and she says so and because she's keeping us safe from the CIA stage bombings. What a criminal over the coup d'etat in this country. She is just a arch piece of trash and needs to get the you know what out of my country. I am so sick of Dianne Feinstein and all the rest of the globalist crap. Her works are bad enough, I shouldn't call her names. I'm just so sick of these people. I'm, look, I can't travel because of her. The feds are out of control, the TSA is now on the streets. They're molesting children. I want it to stop, I want justice. I'm sick of bad people like her winning and twisting my country and strangling the liberty out of this country, suffocating our republic. I'm tired of it. Let's go to a clip of her acting like they're protecting us and saying the public doesn't like it, but the TSA needs to continue what they're doing and get ready for it to intensify. Here is the un-American piece of trash, Feinstein. That's one of the reasons why Abdul Matalib wore it in his underwear, uh, so that he couldn't be patted down sufficiently to detect it. And that's a problem. And that's something that TSA has to grapple with. And uh, the American public 
uh, has not been terribly sympathetic, although most people are, most travelers uh, say, I'm going to go with the flow, I recognize the need, therefore I really don't mind being patted down. Maybe I should have teleprompters in here, because i just tell you what I really think. <laughs> Maybe I could load them with, with info, info I write. It's just that woman and, and, and all of her ilk, they are such predators posing as liberals. They're not misguided. These are authoritarian pigs destroying our country, okay? They're the enemy of this country, and they pose as our saviors, and I'm tired of it. Now let's go to David Hasselhoff, who is a funny guy. I like him. My kids like him in the movie Hop. But, I mean, talk about a mindless response. It, it's almost like that Britney Spears clip. We'll play a clip of that right now, where she says, I just think we should do whatever our president says. That's what it is to be American. We just should just shut up and do whatever the president says when he wears his codpiece landing on the deck of an aircraft carrier, as Bush had just done, when giving up our liberties. Here's that clip. Honestly, I think we should just trust our president in every decision that he makes, and we should just support that, you know? and um, be faithful in what happens. Do you trust this president? Yes, I do. All right, so you saw Brittany Dingbat Spears. I feel sorry for the Hoff. They ask him, hey, do you mind the TSA groping you? Oh, I don't mind as long as they don't ask for autographs. So all he cares about is not having to sit there and sign autographs. Okay? And you know, he, he doesn't mind if little kids are being groped. He doesn't mind if all this is happening. He just wants to go along with it and enjoy himself and be a vapid, shallow person like Britney Spears. I mean, if you, uh, if, if the Hoff speared Spears, we would end up really having a jellyfish creature that would put up with any level of tyranny. So I hope people contact Hasselhoff and uh, get some sense into him. He was on a big UK TV show, Eight Out of 10 Monkeys, that's one of the top shows over there. Did I get the name right, Eight Out of 10 Monkeys? Eight Out of 10 Cats, I was thinking of Hasselhoff acting like a dumb monkey, excuse me, that was not an attempt at humor. And it's one of the biggest shows in the UK, and they play a clip, they asked us last week, they said, can we play a clip of you uh, from your nightly news show? And I said, yeah, go ahead. Never did I think they'd edit it to where I, I was saying, I'm not, wanting to grope women at the park. I'm not wanting to do this like 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 I've been caught doing something. I was pointing out that who wants a TSA job? I'd just gone through how they're getting busted as pedophiles and all this, and I was saying, of course, because either they're super hard up for a job or they want to go after little kids and abuse people and exercise power. This is a joke. And so they turn it around like I'm the one doing something bad not the TSA. This is classic mind control. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, David, what do you make of airport security? Do you mind it? Or? I'm ha very happy to wait in security and, and go through as long as, you know, they don't ask for an autograph for a picture. That isn't why the queues are long, by the way. <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the security everywhere I go because it makes it a lot safer and if we have to wait in line. Some of your but... country people are not as fond of the airport security. Have a look at this. There's all these stalkers in people I've been reading now going and getting jobs, especially in LAX and other areas, so they can grope you. Pedophilia off the charts with them. Robbing people's bags. Hitting on women. It's incredible. Who else wants to grab people's genitals all day? Who else wants to rub men and women's crotches? I mean, I don't care if it was Marilyn Monroe in her height of beauty. And I obviously would be attracted to a woman like that. I would be embarrassed and would not want to put my hands on her without her wanting it. I'm not a rapist. I'm not a molester. I'm not an abuser. I'm not a fondler. I don't go to parks to jump out and grab women. <laughs> Excuse, excuse me, I'm just filling out my application form. <laughs> that, was Alex, uh, that was Alex Jones, the American shock jock. Yeah. So there you have it. It's all a big joke, and they're using little poo-poo words and stuff on air, so it's all real funny to live in 1984. Well, a lot of us aren't laughing, Mr. Hoff. All right, uh, continuing here, moving right along. They have Russians in Colorado doing drills right now. No, that's really happening. This isn't the onion. And on top of it, here in the United States, they're having drills all over the country to acclimate you to military presence. FEMA and Pentagon National Guard Homeland Response Force trains in New York, their favorite 
uh, acclimation area where they always first tell you it's for hazmat and stuff, but later it becomes gun confiscation drills. Several hundred National Guard members from the Northeast and Caribbean will be in central New York uh, this week for disaster preparedness training. They will train for certification as regional disaster response force capable of assisting responders following chemical, biological, nuclear, or high explosives incident. So they ship guns into Mexico and we get shot, they'll be there, or the feds launch another anthrax attack, the feds will come, come save you and protect you from all of that. Well, they've got it in the UK that's the model of police state tyranny, and now it's coming here. Federal grants to your local town, talking light poles, but also light poles that you don't know are listening to you all going back to a central system. Talking surveillance cameras coming to U.S. streets, IntelliStreet system now being installed on DHS backing. And the feds are looking at making everybody wear taser bracelets when they get on airplanes. No, the feds actually heard a proposal on that. They're not joking. They're looking at it and thought it was a very good idea. Make sure the slaves are all under their control. What's a criminal do when they rob a bank? They secure the prisoners. Okay, uh, let's continue here. Moving right along in our police state coverage, speaking of places that are police state training grounds, New York City's where they rolled out the TSA on the streets groping children uh, a long time ago, and now it's nationwide on the streets. New York police have broken any record. 200,000 people pulled over, 203,500 in the first three months of this year, and now they search their cars without warrants, and they're also searching people at checkpoints on the streets. Absolute North Korean style martial law now going nationwide everywhere. And don't forget, all over the country, they're now announcing that the gardener, uh, the cable person, the phone person, they're all spying on you and getting cash awards. Not for terrorism, but spanking your kids, marijuana. We are the snitch society. They're saying drones are going to be watching you, already are. All of your money being used to enslave you while private companies that produce all this equipment, the naked body scanners, make the money. They take your tax money, private groups profit, while they turn you into a total prisoner, and they hire a bunch of the dumbed-down people in the public schools who have no future and no jobs to convert the economy over to be the police state minders. And they're like, hey, I, I couldn't get a job at McDonald's, but now I'm fondling your child. This is really great. This is what America's become. Land of the dumbed down, cowardly, filthy slave. I want my country back. I want it back right now. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all of it. I'm serious. Get mad and get focused and say, you're a bunch of terrorists that have hijacked this country. You stage the terror attacks, and you're a bunch of criminals trying to break our national will. And we're aware of you, and all of you that work for it are a bunch of sympathizers. And this is the first day that the resistance forms and stops laying down to this. This isn't just a bunch of people being run over and genocided. This is the day the war against tyranny starts. Believe me, we got the people to do it. So info war, wake somebody up tomorrow and have them wake somebody up. And we're going to take this country back even if they stage terror attacks so they can put their hands on our kids and break our will. Bunch of pieces of crap. Excuse me. This is not a good show tonight. I am angry and I'm tired of it. Ah, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of them trying to break our will and dominate us and bully us. Wherever the feds are, because they're foreign banker run, there is no America. These are America freedom free zones. They are cancer. Training that little kid to be abused, training that kid to be a prisoner, training to induct him into the whole world being a prison. That's worldwide tyranny. Worldwide 1984. Well, I want freedom worldwide. That's what I want. Teleprompter free news, baby. Here's the daily quote, and then we're going to go through some of what uh, I saw this weekend that's got me so upset down at the Texas coast. But let me go ahead and give you the daily quote right now. Do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Bruce Lee. Yeah, an easy life does not make one strong. It turns you into a jellyfish. That's why the globalists have been able to take over. They killed us with prosperity. Now they're taking it away. Liberty created prosperity. That allowed the criminals to come in and take over. All right, we're about to go to break and come back with an update on the police confirming our story was real. Drugging people taking the Occupy 
Wall Street people and taking them and offering them cocaine, heroin, whatever they want, so they can then put them back on the streets and claim they're drug addicts and put them in databases. Amazing criminality, but it's just one step closer to the government openly shipping the drugs in. They already push all the deadly pharmaceuticals on your kids. But let me take you now to this report. It's Mother's Day Sunday. My mom wants to go to the National Seashore. It's in the middle of the Texas coast, over 100 miles from Mexico, so there's no security issue there. And, you know, oh, the security issue. The biggest security threat is the government historically. And again, they make us all prisoners in the name of safety. So I usually go stay at Port Aransas 40 miles away. But my mom's like, let's go, you know, where we used to go when you were a child. Let's go to the National Seashore. They got a lot of National Seashores, but it's the biggest in the U.S. And it's a big federal park. And I was there just a couple of years ago with my parents. And you'd see a park ranger maybe once a day. Now, every five minutes, they're driving back and forth in front of you. And they get out and ask you, hey, you're not poaching sea turtles, are you? And you're like, no, well, just they're about to hatch. And, you know, and we're like, okay. And then another one pulls up and, you know, don't go in the dunes. There's not a law, but the rattlesnakes will get you. And there's big sand dunes. And I'm like, there's rattlesnakes all over Texas. How many incidents do you have? And they're like, only a few a year. And then they drive by and say, hey, Alex. They're driving by and I hear, hey, Alex. And I turn around as I'm, my kids are playing in the surf. There's a truck right there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, when I pulled in here, the park ranger said, you're Alex Jones at the, at the gate paying him 10 bucks. <clears throat> so all of this is going on. My parents are down there in a pop-up. We're out there barbecuing, doing what evil Americans do. You know, I'm bad. I'm a security threat. The government's not, though. Founding fathers are wrong. Government has made the sun come up that morning, the grass grow. <clears throat> so I'm out there minding my own business, and uh, I noticed there's like a car 100 yards away, another car 100 yards away parked. They pull over and stop and talk to them. They pull over and stop and talk to other ones. And this is all part of this assessment thing. So another one comes back, and I go, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm federal law enforcement officer. wanted to impress me. And, and he was sitting there asking his questions, trying to assess this and everything. But they were doing it to everybody because we're all the enemy. And I realized, wait, they're shutting down beaches all over the country saying you can't go swim now in Florida and other areas. They, they admit it's U.N. buffer zone. They want to teach you that the property isn't yours. They're banning cars first. I'm behind the pop-up showering off as an outside shower. And they pull up again. And I'm like, this is a joke. This time they finally have something. And they say, just what do you think you're doing to my seven and four-year-old? Because they had thrown a, a hamburger bun at the seagulls who were constantly begging for food. And of course, my, and my mom said, I've been down here 40 years and never had you guys tell us how to feed seagulls. And they go, well, you can get in trouble for it. It's against policy. You know, you know that whole excuse, don't feed the bears. Well, these are seagulls. And I said, look, I'm not coming back here. I've been harassed like it's an airport. This is pathetic. It's Agenda 21. I know you're getting ready to shut down part of the beach, aren't you? In the future, they're like, ooh. My wife got a little bit of footage on her camera, but her camera ran out of batteries. We weren't expecting this. But then I noticed that if you go, left the park to go get ice or something, they had cars all waiting, just randomly pulling people over to hopefully get them on DWI or whatever. The point is, you're seen as food. You're seen as something to be fed on by these predators. It's like our East Texas property, our ranch we've had since 1830s, uh, Mexican land grant. Sometimes a game warden would show up, we were out there camping, but hi, how you doing? Oh, just checking on things. Six or seven of them run in last year. We're just out there camping. Start getting in our face telling us they're with a federal task force bugging their eyes out at us. Again, they've sent forth swarms of agents to eat out our substance, Declaration of Independence. But the good news is, is right after they harassed me that last time and I got in their face, the first car to stop goes, Alex Jones, hey, you're awesome. We're listeners. And I went down and talked to one car that had just been harassed as well. And they said, yeah, the seagulls were flying around, so we threw them a chip. They were right on us. I went and talked to the other group. They didn't want to be on camera, but they were listeners. The park ranger at the office was a listener. A guy driving by was a listener. People on both sides of us were listeners. I said, that's it. I'm going to Port A to go check into a hotel. I go there with my family. I walk down to the pier. 
I walk in and, and buy a bottle of water because I'd walk with my children a couple miles down there. And they go, Alex Jones? And the dad's a listener, the son cooking hamburgers in the back, a little place, and the mom's a listener. I walk out, people go, keep up the good work, Alex. Fisherman up on the top of the pier. I'm walking down the beach, people are like, that's Alex Jones. That's Alex Jones, that's Alex Jones. I walk in one gas station last night in Kyle to get gas and to get a Perrier, I'm evil. And the two kids in there buying something are listeners. Is that him? Is that him? Folks, again, we are really starting to have an effect. And so you've seen these video clips and photos interspersed in here. Uh, the point is, is that they're hiring people who just get off on bossing people around. In the old days, cops would just drive up and down the beach. If they saw a problem, they'd do something. Driving out to Port A, I saw a car catch on fire. Well, I saw it smoking in the distance. Once we got there, it was pretty much burnt out. The police and fire department were there. That's what real police do is, is respond to real things, not just henpeck you. That happened to me at the Grand Canyon. We were driving the RV up, looking for the RV parking. She pulls us over, starts screaming at us, and says, what are you doing up here? And we go, we're looking for the RV park, and we're on a major road. She goes, this road's for buses only. I could have you arrested. And I just looked at her, and I said, Richard Reeves was there. He, he, he went with us. And I said, you really want to have us arrested? You really want to just tell me that? I said, all we did was at night pull up here. It's major road. Where, where is the parking? And she settled down and went, you're right. Let me show you where it is and led us to it. And it was just right down the street. What is this? An RV's on the wrong road. Let's blow up and threaten to arrest people with little kids. It's always the little kids that make them stop. Because my kids were looking at them out the window all scared, and, and the woman kind of felt bad and, 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 and uh, backed off. But the point is, you just, you're all hyped up like you're fighting Al-Qaeda. We didn't even get to that story. Mainstream news admits that our government is funding Al-Qaeda to blow up Assad military bases and in, in, in police stations. And they're wearing Al-Qaeda black uniforms with Al-Qaeda patches with the UN. They just gave them Libya. And, you, and, you, and you, the police are all afraid of the non-existent threat of Al-Qaeda getting in people's faces. I'm tired of it. You're ruining the country. Your, your bosses are telling you to do this in an attempt to get the public Police have told me, we're told to arrest people for no seatbelts, to get them in the database. They want everybody used to being arrested. That's diabolical. That's tyranny. And I know you won't get promoted. You're in a peer pressure thing. You want that 100000 Some cops are paid 150000 even sergeants. You want that big money. Is your soul worth it? Isn't your passion for truth? I was talking to a friend who trains police just today. And the guy didn't know that I'm friends with him. <clears throat> the, the police officer didn't. And he goes, yeah, you were this big, you know, high-level cop, but you've been busted down now just to patrol. And he goes, yeah, they want us to break the law and do a lot of bad stuff. I wouldn't do it, so they busted us down, you know, me and a whole bunch of the buddies. And he's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. He goes, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing some work with Alex Jones. He goes, Alex Jones, he's a little bit alarmist. I mean, he's, a, he's an okay guy, but he's alarmist. And my friend's like, but you just said you won't do criminal things in the Austin Police Department, so a bunch of you got busted down. See, you're not going to run from this. You're all targeted by it. Everybody's targeted by it. This is wrong. If it's against the Bill of Rights and Constitution, it's a load of bull. That's common sense. And as we lose that Bill of Rights and Constitution, we're losing our whole society. So here's one more of the clips as we go out to break. We're going to come back with our guest with the police drugging people. But hey, the troops grow the opium, so again, all of this, Al-Qaeda works for the government, the troops grow the opium, the terrorists run the government. Does that mean the average military man or bureaucrat is bad? No. But the system is bad at the top, and we better reverse this now, because the globalists are setting up to totally take over, to secure all their ill-gotten gains. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. And we are back. Thank you for joining us here at InfoWars Nightly News. If you believe in the First Amendment and our defense of this republic and freedom worldwide, please become a subscriber at prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. Nine plus years that we've had the site. All of my documentary films, my book, Paul Watson's book, the commercial free daily radio slash TV podcast, expanded extras, 
uh, live uh, video feeds when I'm on the road. And your membership at PrisonPlanet.tv helps fund this truly independent teleprompter free media. Again, thank you for joining us and thank all the subscribers out there for your support. Without you, we couldn't do it. PrisonPlanet.tv. We have a 15 day free trial, and each membership is really six memberships with your username and passcode that you create. Just make sure it's not your passcode for your bank account. Uh, you can share that with up to five other people who can simultaneously be logged on. So that's six memberships for the price of one, prisonplanet.tv. Also remember, it's your other purchases that make uh, what we do here uh, possible, like the ProPure Gravity Fed Filters, the best on the market. We have them at the lowest prices with a 10% discount on top of it when you use the promo code WATER at InfoWarsShop.com or follow the shopping cart link at InfoWars.com. Again, we're not funded by David Rockefeller and the New World Order or MSNBC, who's funded with bailout money. That is your tax dollars. We're funded by you. So if you believe in what we're doing, please financially support us and also spread the word about the broadcast, which I know you're doing. Now, we are joined by Dan Fight, who is an investigative journalist. He's reported there at the Capitol in Minnesota. He also runs a popular news site. A few weeks ago, he broke video along with his team of the state police pulling up and taking young people to give them heroin, cocaine, marijuana, you name it, and then bringing them back and dumping them out at Occupy. Now, we've seen this in Austin and in New York and L.A., where they take uh, the homeless, the mentally ill, prisoners, and tell them, you'll be arrested if you sleep anywhere but at Occupy. Then they come and aim cameras at the homeless guys defecating everywhere. Now, regardless of what you believe at, uh, about Occupy Wall Street, they have a First Amendment right, and this is part of a black op program to demonize these groups. And when we had Dan Fight's video that was obviously real state police, obviously real cops saying, turn your cameras off, the police came out and said it wasn't real. And they came out and said we were conspiracy theorists. And now they've come out in the local papers, we'll show screenshots of those there on screen, and have said there's no truth to this, but yes, it's true. So it's, it's a new level of doublespeak talking to you uh, like you're an idiot. Uh, so just amazing. We also have a press release uh, put out by the state. And again, all of that is up at InfoWars.com and also on our guest uh, website that you'll see under him. Uh, Dan, fight. You are certainly fighting tyranny. Uh, wow. Uh, so big reversal. Why are they now admitting that they're taking young people to put them on drugs? Well, essentially, the uh, story that the uh, state police put out was that a uh, police officer in a rural town called Hutchinson um, uh, stepped forward, told his, uh, uh, his police chief that, yes, in fact, he had seen uh, a state trooper distributing marijuana. And um, at that point, uh, you know, supposedly the wheels started turning and they started having an internal investigation. Also, uh, the major local daily, the Star Tribune, in uh, their coverage of the story, now, uh, they are claiming credit because they interviewed one of the DRE participants who named a specific officer, and then uh, the Star Tribune inquired uh, around noon that day about that officer, and then by about 5 o'clock, that officer had been suspended um, in the state patrol. So, uh, you know, suspensions have taken place. Um, I've heard the FBI has started uh, questioning people, so they're trying to kind of cover their end of things. Um, and, uh, and frankly, the local media is now having to... To actually take these things seriously because now obviously they, they don't necessarily believe what regular people say but once the authorities confirm that something is going on uh, then they had to run with that story it's been very interesting to uh, talk with the journalists and see uh, the, the press layer of this because nobody uh, in the media business, nobody likes to confront these un uncomfortable issues of the war on drugs. Uh, one reporter told me that they had to essentially fight their management for days to finally get a story out, but once the official wheels started turning, then they could finally do a story. So uh, those wheels are turning, and, um, and I think that uh, it's given a lot of political impetus to a lot of different activists around town, kind of affiliated with the Occupy movement and more broadly. Uh, last night, uh, people were uh, sleeping out in front of the U.S. Bank, fighting against its uh, you know fraudulent system 
system of uh, stealing houses and stuff. Uh, several houses are occupied in the Twin Cities in defiance of eviction orders and that kind of thing. So we're seeing a real strong presence on the streets, uh, a real strong momentum among uh, different, you know, social movements. And I think that uh, highlighting this kind of abusive behavior has uh, helped drive that forward. Well, Dan, you also pointed out that the banks sure they're protesting have been caught laundering hundreds of millions of drug money. Bloomberg reported Wells Fargo and its subsidiary Wachovia laundered $376 billion from just 2008 to 2010. That broke in 2010. Uh, so it's a joke to have the police out who will pull over a teenager and take him to jail for drugs, but then they're there pushing it on them. Uh, last time you were on, I ended up playing a clip later of Geraldo Rivera admitting the troops grow the opium. Then it's shipped here, but if you're caught with it, you go to jail. Uh, meanwhile, the doctors are pushing, you know, synthetic opiates on the public. Rush Limbaugh's been addicted to them. It's a joke. You don't treat drug addiction by putting people in prison, and all that does is train them to be criminals. Yes. You make drugs illegal, now they cost 100 times or more. People rob you. That's just a tax to the banks. You kill mm -hmm. the, uh, the, this whole drug system by decriminalizing. And I know I'm ranting, right. but, but this just shows what a fraud it is, and it shows how yes. deceptive they are. It's one thing to have college students uh, volunteer or police volunteer to be part of a drug program to take drugs so they can recognize it if drugs are still going to be illegal. But it's another thing entirely to use it as a way to basically, and what you said a few weeks ago has now come out, I noticed, they were giving them drugs and money to get them to be informants to go set up and make stuff up about Occupy Wall Street, yes. just like they did at the RNC four years ago where they set people up. Uh, yes, and uh, I think that it's also prompted a broader discussion across the whole movement about a wide variety of, of shady and similar incidents that happen in, in many, many cities. Um, so I, I think uh, getting that discussion going again is very important. And, and I want to add, too, that uh, I worked, uh, you know, covering issues at the state legislature for four years, and I made it a very special point to go out of my way to talk to legislators behind closed doors about the war on drugs, about how uh, prohibition creates a flow of uh, laundered drug money through the banking system. And uh, while one clever legislator said that uh, making it a cause of action for civil lawsuits against the banks to essentially claw back the equity that they extract from neighborhoods in the way that Wells Fargo does, for example, that would be one possible uh, remedy the state legislature could have to uh, fight this uh, laundered drug money system. I also would add um, people at the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension uh, told me that they do not have access to the uh, wire transfer system at the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. And so that's an example of how at the state level, uh, the flow of laundered drug money is essentially uh, firewalled off uh, from the local officials and then instead uh, federal grant programs. In Minneapolis, we have something called the Safe Streets Task Force, um, which is kind of a little similar to the Joint Terrorism Task Force. And there's a lot of uh, operations with federal informants that are involved there and that kind of thing. And that's another, yet another uh, kind of drug program that has no functional oversight. Um, there's yet another program in St. Paul going on right now called Clean Sweep, which is, uh, uh, you know, searching lots of people. People uh, in minority neighborhoods, uh, certainly the St. Paul police are, are not going to treat people in the white neighborhoods in the same way. So uh, it, it's a real step forward to have uh, this program suspended right now um, and have those expenditures suspended, which is the direction things need to move. But whether or not we can have a, a decent debate about uh, the actual problems of the war on drugs, that does remain to be seen. I, and I give credit to uh, City Pages for being the uh, local publication, which at least is uh, getting to the serious issues of drug war corruption in our state. And notice, Dan, how upfront they tried to deny this even existed. I mean, when TSA mm -hmm. was caught starting to go in the pants of people three years ago, they said for a year, we're not doing this till thousands of videos came out. It's a policy to lie to us, like the police and military are an occupying army, and we're some enemy that's just to be lied to. All they're doing is discrediting themselves. And I'm seeing, I mean, when Pat Robertson comes out and says decriminalize marijuana, you know their war on drugs is, is really on its last legs. The question is, what are these big banks gonna do when they can't tax us by their uh, customers mugging us and stuff to buy their overpriced drugs. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we have to keep uh, driving the debate forward. We have to keep insisting that uh, people like the mayor explain themselves, to take a stand, to explain uh, how does the corruption and drug prohibition work. You know, I, I, I can't help but uh, wander around town, and when I, you know, talk to somebody, they're just like, yeah, the, the police just planted drugs in our car after they searched it, you know, and they laughed at us and said, yeah, we're going to plant it. What are you going to do? You have a public defender. So that you know, that type of abuse is just reproduced at one local police department after another. Um, and, uh, and by you know, the way, I, I knew about police stealing drugs in Dallas. That's why I was in high school five years. I, we had to move to Austin, and my dad sold his dental practices just because the police were, through lawyers and people, threatening to kill me and, and, and taking me to jail for stuff and saying, we're going to plant drugs on you. This, and then later, the sheriff, uh, McWhorter, got busted in Rockwell, you can look it up right after I moved, by the feds flying drugs in. So, so that's on record that happened. This is so ubiquitous. Take Dallas, again, where I'm from. A few years ago, they got caught pulling over nice cars, throwing bags of chalk in it, and the Dallas Police Department would certify it as cocaine and take their car. I mean, this is a criminal enterprise. Alcohol prohibition ended in the 30s. The police have been corrupted. They were addicted to the money. They wanted the high life. They made narcotics and marijuana illegal shortly after and went into business controlling that. And that's all this is. Let's be honest. Government and big corporations control over 90% of it, and they just use it as a way to put people in private prisons working for 25 cents an hour, displacing all our jobs. Good old boys say, make them criminals work in prison. They got hot tubs and cable. No, they don't. They're there learning how to be criminals that they weren't before, nonviolent people, taking our jobs on the outside. It's so elementary. The bank ship the drugs in, then they own the big private prisons and put the drug slaves in the prisons. I mean, that is a masterful mm -hmm. profit structure. Yeah, it, it is a, a, a truly ugly cycle, and obviously it just keeps accelerating. And so um, what I am hoping is that uh, out of all of this, that, you know, that discussion needs to move forward. And I think that social activists across the spectrum need to start uh, looking at this more seriously. I am I'm hoping that the Occupy movement can, you know, keep that rolling more seriously. But I would also add, uh, this was uh, pretty cool that um, uh, a few days ago, uh, labor unions were um, had taken intersections near uh, the U.S. bank uh, area on Nicollet Mall, which is right up from PV Plaza. And they had, they had taken, uh, you know, one intersection, and then the police had said, move, or we're going to arrest you, blah, blah, blah. They're bringing in the paddy wagons, and people started chanting the name of the program, D-R-E, D-R-E. They chanted that, and man, those police backed off. I am telling you, the police in Minneapolis, the mayor even, the mayor did not show up for the first time ever. He did not make an appearance at the, the May Day Parade, which is a major event in the kind of, you know, uh, left side of town uh, down in Powderhorn. He wasn't even willing to walk the parade because they're trying to extort us with a stadium right now, which is, you know, pretty unpopular around the city. And, you know, stadiums are themselves monuments to, you know, chemical dependency and consuming more alcohol, but also with the DRE program. I don't think the mayor wanted to face uh, the, the angry public over these different issues. Uh, so we're seeing that uh, we can, uh, if we push back, we can actually start getting real yes. traction. And so if everyone does this in their own cities, if you start like taping drug corruption, you know, get your cell phones out, um, you too can, uh, you know, get some mileage going and, and try to get ugly programs like this shut down. Well, Dan, all over the country, people are waking up to this, but they're also waking up to Al-Qaeda being a Western creation. It's in the major papers that, oh, we are using Al-Qaeda to attack Syria, but this is good Al-Qaeda. But then I've got to give my rights up because Al-Qaeda is hiding under my desk and wants to get me. I mean, people are really waking mm -hmm. up that drugs, terrorism, all of this is simply a pretext to take our freedoms. Uh, yes, and I, I think, um, you know, the role of uh, private military contractors for, you know, several decades remains to be, you know, uh, formally laid out, even though uh, those of us that have researched it feel the problem's fairly obvious. Um, and, of course, uh, Sibel Edmonds, uh, the FBI whistleblower, uh, you know, recently released her new book, Classified Woman. Um, I followed the Edmonds case for a long time because that involves uh, the drug trafficking networks across Asia. And, um, you know, we have the NATO summit coming right up. We, we should probably ask the question 
questions about what is the role of NATO, uh, Sibel Edmonds said that uh, NATO planes have been used to build up uh, Islamic fundamentalist militias around Asia and Europe to essentially perform their logistics, move them through Turkey, and then up into the Caucasus and uh, Balkans-type regions. So uh, the role of NATO in particular as an organization, I think, is probably one of the next places we should start looking, as well as, obviously, the American banking system. That's right. The Al-Qaeda and other groups, whether it's in Albania, you name it, work for the banks. And then they, the banks use them to menace us so the banks can take our liberties and freedoms. It's a banking dictatorship. It's global banker occupation. And they're not free market. They use crony, insider, monopolistic tactics to shut down yeah. the little guy. They are parasites and they are the enemy. In closing, they're acting so paranoid and lying so much here, out of hand and being caught, Mm -hmm. uh, this looks like this is a lot more than just a program uh, to test drugs. Uh, are, are you getting any other uh, chatter on what else may be going on? Because you see one cockroach uh, when you turn the lights on, there's more. Uh, yeah, and, and I think, uh, you know, that's one of the major reasons why a lot of people could relate to the video is because apart from the fact that, you know, a lot of people around town had experienced this in previous years before this year, um, uh, the war on drugs is a, is a very, you know, it's an enterprise that feels sketchy, you know, when you're on the real texture of it. And that's what everybody could really relate to. So I think that, um, you know, one, yeah, once you start turning up these rocks, more, more things start uh, spilling out, more things start coming forward. And, um, and also, too, in terms of this particular particular program, uh, they're really trying to basically hang this on, you know, one or two rogue officers, classic limited hangout, but they're still not willing to uh, really forthrightly address the fact they were dropping off people intoxicated in public spaces. They're not willing to address the fact they didn't have, uh, you know, adequate medical coverage and ambulance available down at this facility in Richfield where this was going on. So again, there, there are still multiple levels of this case yet to be explored, but I am hoping that we can force accountability. We can force, uh, you know, people like the mayor and the state government to say, okay, well, we do recognize that, you know, banks do launder a lot of drug money. Like this is a consequence of prohibition. And um, they gain a ton of leverage by pretending that that's not the case. And so I am really hoping that we can keep chipping away at this because more of these things are going to keep on coming out. That's just the nature of the system. It is. I mean, you scratch a wall anywhere, you're going to find this stuff. And that's why everybody can just pick one little area they want to fight and it will move mountains. Dan Fight, thanks for spending time with us. Hey, great to be with you, Alex. I really appreciate the time. Oh, I appreciate you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, he's confirmed right. We're confirmed right again. The police trucking people to warehouses to give them any drug they want in exchange for basically going and spying on peaceful protesters. Classic. Absolutely classic. Great job to the crew. That's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Lord willing, I'll be back on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern for the big uh, daytime radio slash TV transmission. And uh, then we'll be back tomorrow night. I'll be host of the Nightly News, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern, prisonplanet.tv.